Episode 1 of All of Us Are Dead begins with a kid called Jin Su bullied at school. With rain pouring down and under the neon sign of a cross, Jin Su hits back and snaps. With contorting limbs, he launches himself at the other kids and tumbles down to his death. Or at least, it should be his death. He's still alive and taken into hospital with serious injuries. He's not himself though, and his father, Byung Chan, shows up and notices him growling and snarling. Holding a Bible, he apologizes before beating his son down down. It's not enough though and he's still alive. We then skip across to Hyacin High School. Specifically the science lab, where a crazed rat inside a cage bites a girl called Hai Inju. As she holds her bleeding finger, Byung Chan shows up. It appears this is his lab and when he notices Hai Inju's cut, he shuts the door and holds her captive. After his son went missing, rumors have begun spreading about Byung Chan. Kids whisper that he smells like a rotting corpse, and since Jin Su's disappearance, he's slowly been growing more crazed and erratic. Well, if that includes tying up that bitten student and keeping her captive inside his lab, then yes, he's most definitely crazy. It's here we settle down a little and start to get to know some of these students. Anjo is a bright optimistic kid, but her father has absolutely no hopes for her to excel at school. There's no pressure, and he admits that everyone is equal, especially as he works as a paramedic and see life-threatening injuries every day. One of her best friends is Cheong San, and he clearly likes her. He doesn't show it though, instead treating her mean. However, that's nothing compared to the mean bully in school, Gwai Nam. He's the guy we saw beating up Jin Su at the start of the episode. He turns his attention to a couple of other kids, including Yoon Jai, whom he forces to strip off, and Chi and Su, who he forces to film. Su Hayak shows and tries to put a stop to this, but the kids are scared and succumb to the bully's wishes. Unfortunately, things only get worse for Yoon Jai, who finds herself at Myung Hwa's will. He scribbles over her t-shirt, writing in English I'm not sexy while in class. While Yoon Jai excuses herself, he Sun does too as she feels under the weather and needs to see the nurse. Hai Yunju comes stumbling out from the lab she's been kept in and is clearly infected. With bloodshot eyes and snarls, the teacher rings the hospital. The other kids mention that Hai Yunju smells like a rotten corpse too. The paramedics arrive to take Hai Yunju away, led by An Jo's father. An Jo says goodbye to her dad, potentially for the last time. Hai Yunju is not herself and she's taken to the heart of the city. Unfortunately, when Byung Chan realizes that Hai Yunju has gone, he's shocked and urges them to put her in quarantine. Because of his abduction though, he's approached by several police officers and arrested. While this is going on, we learn that the school nurse was actually bitten by Hai Yunju. It doesn't take long for her to turn, with black veins protruding from the bite on her arm. As she lies on the floor, convulsing, Gwai Nam sees her and begins filming. His friend is immediately bitten and turns too. Through a really slick one-shot take we cut from the drama downstairs to see Yoon Jai up on the roof. She wants to escape her living hell, but just before she jumps, several infected students tumble out the window before her, shattering glass and snarling viciously. The infected continue to grow in numbers, and that poses a particularly big problem for the students inside the canteen. Among them are Isaac, Cheong San, Sai Hai Yok and An Jo. The latter is shocked, and as an infected arrives and pins her down, things have gone from bad to Episode 2 of All of Us Are Dead picks up right where we left off. The infection is spreading, and the teachers gather for an emergency meeting. While they squabble, Sun Hua has had enough and decides to make an announcement to tell the other kids what's going on. The thing is, she walks right into the midst of this infection, as the place is absolute carnage. In the canteen, a fire breaks out in the kitchen while An Jo is saved by Cheong San. Another guy who survives is Quine Am, because of course he does. He holds his own against the infected, although it's clear he's just as frightened as the others. He scrambles into the kitchen and hides under a table with several other kids. Cheong San and An Jo try to leave together, dodging and weaving through the hallways, using whatever they can to fend off the assault. Eventually they make it back inside their classroom, where Chong San likens what's happening to train to Busan. 
Several other survivors make it back too, including Su Hayak and Isaac. Although they're safe for now, it's very clear that they won't be for long. One person who does know what's going on is Byung Chan. Down at the station he's interrogated over what he knows. Jaik, the detective, suspects he also killed Jin Su too. The thing is, Byung Chan is behind everything. He experimented on numerous different patients, trying to turn the balance of power from the cats to the mice. In other words, he extracted testosterone and used that as a way of creating a rage virus. And although he was still working on perfecting the serum, Hai Yinju getting bitten has essentially acted as the catalyst for everything that's happened. It doesn't take long before the emergency services are overwhelmed with calls about the zombie outbreak. Well, it turns out An Zhou's father is also a fireman too, and he soon races to the school after a false report about a big fire is called in. Obviously this is a way of bringing in the cavalry, but it may well be too little too late. Coach Kang soon shows up in the classroom, but there's a big problem. He's been bitten and although the other students do block up the doors, it doesn't take long before he turns. And soon after, so too does a student called Min Jai. The heartbreaking way she tells the others she doesn't want to die is a sobering reminder of how futile this infection is to try and fight off. But fight these kids do am led by Dae Su, he uses a door as a barricade to force a way through the hallways. It works a tree too, and allows the survivors to ascend up the floors. Surrounded on both sides, the kids manage to just about make to another classroom. Unfortunately, An Zhou's phone is lost in the skirmish. That teacher, Sun Hua, is actually still alive too. She manages to make it into the broadcasting room. She composes herself and immediately gets on the tannoy to make an announcement. Sun Hua urges the students to leave and get out. The trouble is, the noise actually attracts all the zombies out on the grounds to head inside. She tries to stay positive, telling them all to find a safe space. The thing is, this infection isn't just at the high school now. With Hai Yinju infecting those at the hospital, the fire and police department are essentially divided between different places to try and find a solution. One of those includes An Zhou's father, who is called out to an office building. While this is going on, we cut back to the surviving rabble of students at Hyacinth High. Isaac plays matchmaker, telling An Zhou that Cheong San likes her. The trouble is, her hand is ice cold, and she immediately starts bleeding from the nose. She's infected. With little other choice, Anjo is forced to let go of her friend quite literally, as she's dropped out the window to prevent everyone from being infected. Needing a way out, the kids use the hosepipe outside to create a way down. Na Yin starts to grow impatient, as Jiang Su is first down the rope. Funnily enough, this leads down to the broadcasting station where Sun Hua happens to be waiting for them. One at a time, each of the students head into the floor below. For Anjo though, she's overcome with grief for her friend. Chi Yong san encourages her to get it together. While they leave, Su Hai Yok finds himself alone after the incident in the hallway earlier in the episode. While he scrambled to safety, Anjo is saved but Chi Yong san appears to be lost as he's thrown out the window by the oncoming infection. Episode 3 of All of Us Are Dead returns to the police station, where Byung Chan admits to starting this viral outbreak. While he talks to Jaik, we cut across to Hee Soo who has problems of her own. After leaving the school with an upset stomach, we saw her last episode with water dribbling down her legs. Now, it turns out she was actually pregnant and gives birth in a public bathroom on her own. Cheong Sen, however, survives his tumble off the balcony. He clings on for dear life to the hose pipe, but one of the infected grips his leg, Su Hayak manages to come over and help though, acrobatically diving and managing to grab the hose. It's miraculous that this thing hasn't broken, and it's a pretty ludicrous moment in truth. The infection soon begins to spread across town though, with Hisu forced to evade the zombies while holding on to her babe. She also narrowly misses being hit with a police car too, which is filmed by bystanders. The same bystanders who uploaded onto Facebook can allow our kids in the broadcasting room to see take place. It's a neat way of moving the action back to the broadcasting room. Eventually all the kids reconvene, where tensions break out between Na Yin and Jiang Su. After thwarting an infected, Su Hai Yok accidentally knocks Jiang Su in the nose. 
The thing is, this causes the others to believe he's infected. Na Yin is the ringleader in this, but she refuses to apologize when it turns out he's okay. Na Yin presses on, believing the scratch on his hand was a result of the infected. In order to get to the bottom of this, Sun Hua makes a big decision and decides he should stay in the recording room. At least for 30 minutes anyway to see if anything changes. Guai Nam is still alive too and uses every resource he can to make it to safety. While this is happening, Chi Yongsen's mother notices the news about Hyacin and grabs the nearby bike and races to the school. Anjo's father meanwhile, sees the infection firsthand after being called to the office building where one of the infected is tied to a chair. As the infection grows worse, police mobilize in the streets and prepare to fight back the hordes. This also means Chi Yongsen's mum is forced to take a risky path through the back alleys. And out of all the people she could run into, it's his son. She's still cradling her baby and rushes away, leaving the woman alone to face a rabble of zombies chasing after her. His son takes a turn for the worst. She's infected and wanting to protect her child, she ties knots on the door to herself to try and stop the zombies from getting to the baby, and to stop herself from doing something awful. Back in school, Jiang Su ends up sulking and refuses to come out from the recording room. In order to solve matters, Sun Hua and the kids suggest Na Yin be the one to go in and speak to him. Only, this just makes matters worse. Jiang Su soon begins bleeding from the nose when he's let out, and it seems like Na Yin was right after all. With a shaky voice, Jiang Su decides to leave on his own accord and do the right thing. Just before he turns, Jiang Su experiences some frightening visions. Chi Yongsen manages to distract him by whistling their favorite tune together, which sees him dive out the window and join the rest of the horde. The thing is, Na Yin actually wiped infected blood from the broom used earlier on to fend off the infected. She then used that to infect Chi Yong Su's wound. Nam Rai saw the whole thing and the group turn on her. It doesn't take long for Na Yin to admit to everything. Na Yin eventually leaves, sobbing, claiming she has no friends. In her absence, Sun Hua sternly tells the other kids not to take another life. In doing so, that makes life itself meaningless. After her speech, she heads outside to try and save Na Yin. Grabbing her hand, they hurry away from the horde, leaving the kids on their own. But not for long a helicopter shows up which could prove to be their self. Episode 4 of All of Us Are Dead begins with an influencer on their way to Hyacin. He wants to figure out if the infection is really as bad as everyone is saying it is. Armed with a whole stack of survival gear, he heads into the heart of town and tries to find a safe place to hide. While the helicopter closes in on the school, Chi Yongsen's mother manages to escape the horde nearby and limps toward the school herself. Unfortunately she recognizes Jai Su and calls out for him. But of course in doing so, he's infected so that's a bad move and it leads to her surrounded and killed for her efforts. Yoon Jai is still up on the roof of the school, alongside Chiel Su. Both of them embrace the carnages going on below, wanting to kill those inside the school who have wronged them. The difference here though is that Chiel Su wants to live, while Yoon Jai is still flirting with suicidal tendencies. Inside the broadcasting room, the kids hold Titan come up with a solution for their bathroom woes. It may be a while before rescuers arrive, like father liked daughter, Anjo and her dad both organize traffic and arrange for their respective groups to hunker down and wait for rescue. Guai Nam is still fighting too, and he manages to survive by slaughtering more of the infected. Another rabble of survivors happened to be held up in the girls' bathroom. We saw glimmers of this last episode, but here we see things kick off when Min Jae and Mi Jin fight. Back in the police station, Byung Chan is completely nonchalant to what's happening outside. He sees it as a triumph of the weak fighting back against the strong. He's been well aware of his son being bullied, but the heartbreaking way the school dealt with this, claiming it was just kids fooling around, and how he should be a team player, pushed him into a corner. Jin Su's bullying got completely out of hand, and moving classes just made things worse. Believing he's living in a system of assault, Byung Chan took the bold decision to infect his own son, in the hopes of helping him fight back. Only, he created a monster in the process. 
The interview soon comes to an unceremonious end when the zombie infection spreads across to the police station. Jake fights them back as best he can, but he ends up infected. Byung Chan saves the detective's life, letting Jake escape, but becomes infected in the process. The thing is, Byung Chan doesn't appear to be like the other infected. He seems more sentient, able to walk calmly through the hallways. Before he was turned, he told Jayek about his laptop which could hold crucial clues to stopping this infection. With this knowledge, Jayek heads to Hyacin High School. At the school, Cheong Sen and An Jo watch as a whole bunch of helicopters begin flying into town. An Jo wants to try and get their attention. Nam Rai, however, brings up a far more pressing problem. Dehydration? Although they've sorted their bathroom woes out, they haven't got any water or food, which is obviously a big problem. In order to try and find a solution, the kids decide they need to get to get to the teacher's office. Specifically, they need to find a phone to figure out what's going on. That's problematic though because up on the roof, Yoon Jai makes a bold decision to find Gwai Nam's phone no matter what. The video Gwai Nam took of her during episode 1 was actually scheduled to go live at 9 a.m. That time has now passed, and because Chiel Su has been unable to pay him, thanks to the little complication of a zombie outbreak, their time is up. So Yoon Jai heads for the teacher's lounge. Yoon Jai is infected by the zombies on the way down. Unbeknownst to her, that's the reason the infected have stopped biting. Anyway, she does manage to make it into the office, but so too do Chi Ong Sen and Su Hai Yok. Unfortunately, Yoon Jai smashes up most of the phones. In their eagerness to find a working phone, Chi Ong Sen and Su Hai Yok end up separated as they try to evade the zombies. Over in the office building, An Jo's father manages to hold off the oncoming horde thanks to a hose and some ingenuity. While the congresswoman and the others scramble up the stairs, the firemen are left to hold several doors shut and use the hose to fend off the zombies. With the door upstairs to the roof locked, An Jo's dad is left alone to try and hold them all off and buy the group precious time to escape. The group managed to escape, but for An Jo's father, it seems like he may be infected. The zombies are nowhere to be found, and he's left breathing heavily as they all make it to the rooftop. Throwing a signal flare, the helicopters nearby fast approach. Meanwhile, Chi Yong Sen finds himself in the principal's office with Gwai Nam, who ties up the principal and prepares to kill him. With Chi Yong Sen filming, he watches in shock as Gwai Nam slashes the man's throat and murders him. Cheong Sen grabs the phone and rushes to safety, leaving the bully stalking through the hallways after him. As he throws his knife, whistling through the air, it hits Cheong Sen right in the spine. Episode 5 of All of Us Are Dead begins in the hallway, with our bathroom quartet leaving. Jang Harai has her bow and arrow and goes full on the goal as shooting down the infected. Although their group haven't given up hope, those inside the broadcasting room are on the verge of doing just that. Namra notices the helicopters in the distance and despairs that they're never going to be saved. The Korean government make a massive decision and quarantine the entire area of Hyacin and declare martial law. Although Anjo's father manages to make it to safety with the others, this decision from the government turns the common people against those in Hyacin. Crowds gather on the border, desperate to try and escape, but those outside have grown hostile and begin pelting them with eggs and holding protests. Meanwhile, Chi Yong Sen survives his knife attack thanks to some lucky plot armor. The handle of the knife is what strikes our protagonist, and he rushes into the library to escape. Unfortunately, Gwai Nam is not far behind and the pair fight atop the bookshelves. Chi Yong Sen eventually throws Gwai Nam down to the infected, stabbing his eye and leaving him to his fate. Chi Yong Sen does eventually manage to make it out the library and is saved at the last second by Harai and her arrows. With social media bound with rumors and numerous ill theories, on top of martial law, the government decide to cut off all communications from Hyacinth to the outside world. They're on their own now. The government promised to use their resources to save as many as they can, but with no way to communicate, signals dying all over town, and Chi Ong Sen's captured phone on a measly 6%, things don't look good. The group inside the broadcasting room decide to stop twiddling their thumbs and actually take some action. 
specifically, they're going to formulate a plan to save Cheong San. Jun Yeong and An Zhou team together to find a drone and use that to locate him. With the operation a success, the drone begins flying. Using the camera mounted on it, they see firsthand just how widespread the infection actually is. They don't notice Mi Jin and the others in the infirmary though, who slip out and jump down to the dumpsters on the ground floor. In doing so, they narrowly miss the drone which whizzes up. The group decide to take the drone further outside the school, where they find cars smashed up including Jai Min's dad's truck. They head in for a closer look where her parents have been infected. The drone eventually loses battery and tumbles to the floor. In town, Jae Ik makes it into Cheong San's mother's chicken shop. There, they find the baby on the seats, and the infected Hisu still by the door, tied up. The baby is still alive though, and Jae Ik immediately sets to work trying to find some milk to stop the rate of dehydration. Meanwhile, An Jo's father and the rest of the group are taken to an island holding a private prison. This is a quarantine zone designed for the survivors of Hyacin. They're being kept there and need to surrender all of their personal belongings. That includes the congresswoman too, who is forced to follow protocol. The wait time is between 12 to 72 hours to be seen, and right now they're being kept behind bars. Only, they're not alone. Other survivors are there too, all huddled up together like cattle. We then cut back to the library. Guainam is still alive and not actually infected. According to Byung Chan's overlapping narration, it appears the cells as part of this virus have evolved and mutated to such a degree that they've become sentient. So with Guainam, he is basically infected but a super zombie of sorts. With a bleeding eye and a red hot vengeance, he remains fixated on finding Cheong. Episode 6 of All of Us Are Dead starts on the roof as Chiel Su leaves and Soh's note for whoever may be looking. Yoon Jai, however, happens to still be alive, and despite being bitten numerous times, finds herself in the bathroom washing blood off her hands. Is she another who has survived the infection and become a super zombie? Following what happened to her parents, a suicidal Jai Min is saved by her fellow students from jumping out the window. She isn't sure how to continue on. Anjo takes her aside, though and talks to her about her own familial woes. Anjo doesn't want to lose any more friends and she can empathize with Jai Min's feeling of loss. As they lean on the speaker, a high-pitched whine rings out through the school. This gives Namra an idea as she decides to use the sound as a distraction for the zombies to sneak out and escape to safety. Su Hayak is first to speak, though and he communicates with Cheong San, telling him to hold tight. It's not until An Jo speaks and says the same thing that he actually listens. Unfortunately Gwai Nam is also listening, and with a knife in hand, he charges for the broadcasting room to catch them off guard and kill Cheong San. While all the zombies are distracted by the broadcasts, drawn to the speakers in the corner of each hallway, one lowly zombie happens to be stuck against the wall, right outside the broadcasting room. It constantly smacks its head, while the entire group slowly creep past, before they blow their cover. The chase is on, and they make it to safety. However, Gwai Nam realizes what the kids are up to, seeing their scribble plan in the broadcasting room and continuing his chase. Unfortunately, this also sees him come face to face with Su Hayak. Nam Ra tries to save him, but winds up bitten for her troubles. Gwai Nam is knocked out the window, allowing the pair to escape. The rest of the gang manage to make it over to Cheong San, but in doing so, once again find themselves surrounded. And worse, Nam Ra is obviously bitten and could well be infected. Outside at the quarantine zone, things continue to turn ugly. The group are being kept in quarantine for at least four weeks. An Jo's father, Nam Soju, tries to find a way out sooner, which eventually leads to him choking out one of the guards and knocking out another. An Jo's dad is determined to get back to his daughter and decides to leave, taking their uniform for himself. Posing as a guard, Soju sneaks off with Yu Sin, one of the other office workers in disguise. With no kids in school uniforms among those in the quarantine, An Jo's dad realizes he needs to leave. Meanwhile, Cheong San breaks the news to the others about Wai Nam being infected. As he's basically infected but not a proper zombie, it's unknown what the ramifications are for Nam Ra now that she's been bitten. 
Su Hyok decides to take responsibility for her, choosing to stand by Nam Ra's side and stop the others from hurting her. Tensions soon grow between him and Cheong San. Anjo does try to talk him down, but it soon becomes apparent that Nam Ra is infected, or at least infected with a different strainer variation of this virus. She has the bloodshot eyes and glossy look, but not the bleeding nose or the cold hands. Hostility ripples right the way through the group, threatening to turn them against one another. In order to quell any doubts, Su Hyok ties his hand to Nam Rise, taking full responsibility for anything that could happen to them. Meanwhile, Jayik ventures out of the chicken shop momentarily, only to find another little girl outside. She rushes toward him, with hungry zombies behind her. Jayik manages to save her though, as she points out her infected mother in the horde, banging on the windows. Soju manages to make it free from the quarantine zone, with a little help from Yu Jin who gives him a boost over the wall. However, he goes on alone, and evades gunfire as he tries to make it to safety. Of course, this is an island, so that's easier said than done. Back with the broadcasting group, each of the kids use a handheld camera to send lasting messages with Daesu singing and Anjo promising to do her best. As she speaks, we cut across to Soju once more, who's chased by guards with embarrassingly bad aim. I mean literally he's running in a straight line and he manages to evade every single bullet. As he makes it underwater, it's clear he's been shot once, while Anjo gives an impassioned plea to Episode 7 of All of Us Are Dead begins with Shadow Gamma Group moving through various rooms, wiping out the infected and trying to find survivors. Fronting this pack is Jae Jun, who manages to help secure the area. Only, he winds up bitten in the neck for his troubles and quickly turns. Meanwhile, Soju survives, managing to swim from the island back to the mainland. I'm not sure how far that was but when he makes it back, he's no longer bleeding that heavily and he rushes across the open fields to safety. Elsewhere, Nam Ra is grateful for Su Hayok's faith in her. Su Hayok admits that the others are really scared and he's doing this to try and help quell their fear. According to Nam Ra, she managed to stave off her cravings thanks to hearing Su Hayok's voice in her head. As they talk, Su Hayok admits that he likes her and the pair kiss. Yoon Jai meanwhile makes it to the nurse's office. She admits she's starting to get hungry to Yong Nam, who cowers on the bed as he watches her head over to the fish tank and eat the fish raw. I mean, if you're hungry I guess you'll eat anything. Yoon Jai turns her attention to Yong Nam, who tries to defend himself. Unfortunately he's turned into a zombie too. Somehow Nam Ra can inexplicably hear this take place, with heightened hearing which seems to be a knock-on effect to being bitten. Now, it's important to note here that Yong Nam is just a normal zombie, so the rules are a little hazy over who gets to be a super zombie. Outside in the parking lot, Gwai Nam runs into his old buddy Myong Wan who happens to still be alive and hiding under a car. He slaps Gwyn Nam several times before telling him to run for the car across the way. Only, Gwai Han sacrifices him to the horde, unwilling to be pushed around anymore. Gwai Nam is calling the shots now. Inside the music room, Anjo and Nam Rai patch up their differences. They immediately set to work formulating a plot to escape. Their destination is the roof, but their plan is a risky one. They set up a foundation to block the zombies in one side of the room, using music to lure them all in. In the hope that their barrier will hold, a whole sea of zombies flood into the room. Alongside the choral singing, Anjo bashes cymbals, while Daesu screams at the top of his lungs. More and more zombies pile in. Downstairs, Min Jae and the gang try to build a makeshift stretcher to bring an injured Jun Seong outside. It breaks quickly though, leading Miran and the others to try and build a more stable one next time. And that's it, that's about all the scene setting we get for this rabble group. Jae and Ho Chiel manage to make it to safety with the baby and the little girl. Aboard the delivery bike, they make it to the suburbs where, would you believe it, a ran gibberish the online influencer happens to be. Ever the good Samaritan, Jayik decides to help, while Ho Chia looks for a solution to save them both. Over at the quarantine island, Sian Mu is the man in charge. He speaks to the assemblywoman who urges them to mobilize and try to get the kids out the school. 
She also confirms that's where Soju is heading. On Sian Mu's orders, they bring in a Black Hawk helicopter and begin surveying the area. While they do, Chiel Su happens to be up on the roof, but the doors are obviously locked. Unfortunately, the kids are stuck, and with Chiel Su refusing to open the door, they use a tarp to hold the zombies off for the time being. Unfortunately, it doesn't hold. Guinam soon figures out where they are and manages to come face to face with his foes. He looks at Cheong San and gives a menacing. Episode 8 of All of Us Are Dead picks up with Yoon Jai walking through the school grounds. She notices all the people who used to give her a hard time are now walking zombies. There's a faint whiff of satisfaction that comes from her walk, and she eventually starts a fire inside the offices. A big smile spreads across her face. The fire hungrily laps across papers and desks, burning everything in its wake. That is, until the sprinklers turn on. Up on the roof, Chiel Su decides to keep his mouth shut and saves himself, rather than the other kids. He doesn't tell the soldiers about Cheong Sen and the others, leaving them to their fate instead. Just as the soldiers all fly off, the kids manage to unlock the door, but it's too late. Now, in the middle of this big skirmish, Nam Ra's strange powers manifest, saving Cheong Sen from the wrath of Gui Nam and knocking him back down the stairs. Up on the roof, the kids decide to make a big bold so signal just ink as the helicopter comes back. While they set to work, the other group of kids including Min Jae and the others decide to follow suit and head up to the rooftop too, working out a plan to do this while avoiding the zombies. On the roof, the gang try to make a fire until they realize that Nam Ra actually has a lighter. There seems to be a theme of rooftops this episode, as Jayak and Aranjivarish also try to lure the zombies away so they make it to safety off the roof they find themselves stuck on. Ho Chiel shows up on a minibus, though and encourages them both to jump to safety. The episode then screeches to a halt. Most of the drama we see take place after this revolves around the kids sitting around for the night and waiting for daybreak. Even Jayak, who has had an action-packed series of sequences, ends up on a road trip. While that would ordinarily be okay, it's awkwardly placed right at the tail end of the series, when a midpoint breather would have been more fitting. Anyway, I digress. Downstairs, Na Yin has been stuck in the storage room for much of the season, since leaving the group. She does venture out to grab the video camera, watching the whole group as they leave their messages. Unfortunately, Gui Nam soon finds her, and after evilly telling her he's hungry, bites her neck. Now, it'll be interesting to see if she turns into another of these super-powered zombies, like Nam Ra, or just like the infected. We shall see. Up on the roof, the group who all start talking about how they feel in their lives. Among them is Cheong San, who opens up and reveals that he's like Tan Jo ever since he was six. When An Jo leaves the group to get some space, Su Hai Yak gives an approving nod for him to go and talk to her. An Jo, though, simply tells him to leave. Well, that's probably just as well, because Gui Nam manages to climb up the outside of the roof and makes it to the rooftop. He immediately grabs An Jo, bringing Cheong Sen over to try and stop him. That's just what he wanted, as he slams Cheong Sen down to the ground and begins pushing his thumbs into Cheong Sen's. Episode 9 of All of Us Are Dead starts on the roof with all the kids fighting off Gui Nam who has some freakish strength. Not only does he brush off wood blocks to the back of the head, he also contorts his body in such a way that he doesn't even fall to several stiff punches. Nam Ra's strange infection kicks in again, though in using the same strength she wielded on the stairwell all those episodes ago, she throws Gui Nam to his doom. Again. And just like before, he picks himself back up, one bone crunching limb at a time. Honestly, what will it take to kill this guy? Jae Jun is kept in surveillance at the quarantine center. Sian Mu and the other officers try to discover the origin of the virus, but aren't having much luck. According to this scientist, the RNA structure changes all the time meaning the virus appears to be sentient and changing. However, they're interrupted by news that they've found a detective on the road. That is, of course, Jaik. He reveals the news about Hyacinth High and, more importantly, the laptop. 
Realizing this could hold the clues to the entire infection, the soldiers formulate a plan to bring the laptop back. On Ground Zero, Yoon Jai is saved and is there alongside Chiel Su. She's obviously not herself and looks at him with murderous intent, revealing that she wants to eat him. And unfortunately this bit of casual murder has widespread ramifications. Back on the roof of Hyacinth High, the gang received more visitors. It's not Gwai Nam this time, though but instead the helicopter showing up on the laptop retrieval mission. The kids think they're being saved but instead, they're surrounded by gun-toting soldiers. Everyone has their temperature taken, including Nam Ra who literally just told everyone she hopes to be around them all for more campfire sessions. Gulp. Thankfully the soldiers just think she has hypothermia and give her a blanket instead. As the soldiers start airlifting the various different kids to safety, Yoon Jai's murder causes Si and Mu to have doubts over this plan. He realizes the virus has mutated, and now there's no way of differentiating between those infected and those who aren't. So Si and Mu gives the order to have them all shot dead. Jesus, that escalated quickly. The soldier refuses to shoot them, but does apologize before being airlifted away from the survivors. With the laptop and tow, the soldiers leave with their prize, while the kids are left on their own again. That's particularly bad news for Hanai and the group, who miss their chance to escape and are forced to hide. Back at base, Assemblywoman Kim and Yusin come under fire for Soju escaping. I mean, the soldiers and their terrible aim is as much to blame surely. Anyway, she's interrogated, retelling her story about how Soju saved her life and how she'll always stand by the side of the civilians, especially if it means saving your own blood. With the soldiers no longer willing to help, it falls to one man and his shotgun to help. That man being on Joe's father, Soju. When a civilian asks him for help with his wife, Soju tries to do the right thing and hands over his gun and bullets. Soju heads off alone, charging through the streets to try and find his daughter, negating that struggle and entire plotline of him heading into the store to grab a gun last chapter in the process. Back at the quarantine base, Yoon Jai is held captive. Si and Mu and the others are desperate to work out what's going on with her. The virus has definitely mutated and changed into something different, at least in her. In order to figure out who actually is infected or not, the soldiers take drastic measures. Those Hyacinth citizens are separated from the others, with the assemblywoman and the Rabalov survives given stricter quarantine rules. This includes Jaik and Ho Chiel too. Right on cue, lightning crackles across the sky as the heavens open and soak the town. For those on the roof of the school, they let their emotions flow, having been through quite the hellacious ordeal. In the middle of this storm, Cheong Sen comes up with another idea. They want to use the thunder as a way of disguising their movement. Specifically, they want to head for the mountains, getting away from the urban area completely. The plan is set into action, and the group pair up too, holding hands in order to keep pace. Poor Daesu is the odd one out, but he holds his own hand, and seems to be okay with that. As they make it out the front, everything seems to be going okay, but there's a problem. As Cheong Sen leads his group around the school, he runs straight into his zombie. Episode 10 of All of Us Are Dead picks up with Cheong Sen entranced and wanting to save his mum. Thankfully, Daesu thinks fast and bashes her in the head with a pipe. Cheong Sen loses control though and stops the other students from beating his infected mother. It's utterly mindless and it almost sends the entire plan awry. Thankfully the kids pull Cheong Sen away, despite him shouting mom back at her. So much for the thunder numbing the zombie senses, the zombies track Cheong Sen and the others and begin chasing them. As the group race away, Jun Yeong and the others aren't far behind. Jai Min sacrifices Na Yin to the zombies, but thankfully Harai is there with her group and they save the girl from a tragic fate. It also allows Cheong Sen to be reunited with his sister too. Altogether the group make it into the gymnasium. Only, the entire place is completely full of the infected, and despite thunder rumbling outside, the zombies are every bit as alert and bloodthirsty as they were before. Jun Seong is unfortunately killed for his efforts, while the others all hide inside the storage cupboard for the night. One person left outside is Jaimin who ends up infected. 
she calls out for her mum, but as she turns, more narration from Myung Chan confirms that this Jonas virus is ever-changing, and that means a vaccine is almost impossible to create. After recreating the virus for themselves, the scientists with Si and Mu confirm that everything in Myung Chan's notes are correct. They're not sure they'll be able to stop the outbreak. And even worse, it's now starting to spread across to Yangdong. This also means that Si and Mu and his superiors may well have to give up on Hyacinth completely and leave it to be completely destroyed. In doing so, this also means the assemblyman is forced to resign. She doesn't want to give up on the town, but the party leaders want to preserve her career and give Kim a way out. Back in the storage cupboard, the two groups meet properly and exchange pleasantries by Chek's notes making a ridiculous amount of noise. Great work. Anyway, all of this comes about because Daesu actually really likes Harai and has even been calling Cheong Sin brother-in-law all this time. All this commotion eventually leads to a democratic vote about the next step forward. They all decide to armor up after sharing a chocolate bar, although Daesu greedily takes more than his fair share before Wu Jin can have a bit. Their plan here involves layering up and then using a trolley of gym equipment to fend off the zombies and make it to the door across the other side of the gym. With the group finally ready to move out, they try to stave off the zombies. It's a pretty bad plan, especially when they end up surrounded. Slowly but surely they move the makeshift train. Elsewhere, Si and Mu and the others are briefed by the Nis. They deduce that in one week the infection will spread to a lot of the neighboring towns, and then eventually Seoul. When it hits the capital, this virus is going to cause an unprecedented level of damage. So the only solution they come up with is bombing the entire city of Hyacin to stop this from spreading. One guy who has remained unaccounted for so far is So Ju. H is still on the move, but he's cornered at a construction site. He manages to break free as Cheong Sen and the rest of the group make it across to the door in the gymnasium. With the door locked and chained from the other side, Soju shows up just in time to rescue his daughter and the other. Episode 11 of All of Us Are Dead starts with Soju catching up with his daughter. The pair are finally reunited, while the other kids scramble to safety and manage to escape the horrors of the gymnasium. Soju encourages the group to head back the way he came, through the tennis courts and then to the construction site and beyond. Unfortunately when they get there, the zombie horde is already caught up, and it is them surrounded. Using a signal flare, Soju manages to distract the zombies to let them all escape. Soju starts blowing his whistle and eventually sacrifices himself to make sure the kids make it to safety. Why? Well, it turns out he's been bitten. After saying goodbye to his daughter, Soju is killed. The kids continue on, making it to the construction site, and, after hiding from more zombies again, find themselves on the scaffolding outside. While this is going on, Gwai Nam interrogates Min Jae for answers. As we saw last episode, he managed to escape the others with the bow and arrow, making it into the gym. Gwai Nam bites him, which means he's going to turn into a super zombie like Nam Ra, right? right? Well no, he just turns into a mindless zombie instead. While Gwai Nam goes on the hunt for the kids, Si and Mu and the others are briefed on what's about to transpire. The officials are going to launch sound-emitting drones to target locations in a bid to lure all the zombies out into the open. Specifically to key areas where they can launch missiles to blow them up. These areas include downtown Hyacin and Hyacin High. They deduce that 50k infected will be wiped out along with 10k who are asymptomatic or not infected. Up on the construction site, Namra uses her inexplicable super hearing to understand what's going on from the helicopter flying overhead. With numerous drones released and sent across town, a recurring joke returns. Gwai Nam shows up, he bites Cheong Sen's arm, and then he's thrown up to the ground below. Cheong Sen refuses to let the others succumb to his horrible fate and decides to sacrifice himself. Hey, does everyone else remember when Namra was bitten and ended up absolutely fine? Anyway, moving on. Cheong Sen hugs on Joe one last time and confronts his bully in the building site below while the others hurry on to the mountain as planned. This time though, Gwai Nam really does gouge Cheong Sen's eye out. It's gruesome and pretty gnarly, but it's nothing compared to what happens next. 
the four main areas are blown up, including Hyacinth High, the sports complex and the downtown area. The kids manage to get away, while Wai Nam and Cheong San are both presumably killed in the ensuing inferno that follows. With the operation a success, Si and Mu decides to get some rest. In the morning they're going to send in troops to Ground Zero to check on what's left and see if there are any survivors. For Si and Mu though, the heavy cost of all those lives weighing on his conscience is just too much, and he kills himself in his office. In fact, this comes off the back of watching the final video from Byung Chan, which includes him killing his wife and son as a last resort when he couldn't find a vaccine. As the episode comes to a close, we pan across the devastation of the bomb blasts, including Cheong San's corpse which holds on Joe's Namit. Are Gwai Nam and Cheong San dead? Episode 12 of All of Us Are Dead starts this finale with a grim shot of the construction site. Numerous bodies line the floor, including the infected horde and both Gwai Nam and Cheong San. These guys are definitely deceased. Over at the quarantine center, Assemblywoman Kim rips up her resignation letter, unwilling to be a part of this devastation. At the same time, the poor girl Jaek saves sobs, while Jaek himself looks on in shock at what's happened. Meanwhile, Anjo and the other survivors head back to the construction site to try and find Cheong San. She's still holding out hope of finding her childhood friend. Namra can't smell anything and encourages Anjo to leave and that's probably for the best. What happens in town? Who survives the fight? The early morning sees the soldiers arrive and swarm the area. Despite bombing the high street, everything is surprisingly intact as they move between the stores to try and weed out any survivors and kill the zombies left behind. It doesn't take long before Namra and the others make it into town. They marvel at how clean the area is and how little blood lines the streets, Namra seems to be able to sense zombies, on top of her heightened hearing and unexplained superhuman craziness. She leads the group down the back alleys into town where all the kids decide to gear up and fight back. There are a lot of zombies too, and this really does feel like a last stand. It's absolute chaos, and in the ensuing skirmish, Wu Jin is bitten saving Harai. After slaying Wu Jin, Namra uses her abilities again to convince the others to run away. Namra continues to wrestle with her own dark desires though, with the voice inside her head urging Namra to feed. What happens with Namra? Realizing she's hungry, Namra tries to compose herself away from the group, bashing her head repeatedly and biting her wrist to stave off her cravings. Su Hayak notices that Namra has gone and hurries back to find her. Anjo joins him too as they eventually find the girl leading one of the deceased infected. Namra eventually leaves, after pouncing on Anjo, determined to get away from the others, and not succumb to her need to feed on them. Meanwhile, Daesu, Harai and the other survivors make it to the soldiers and surrender. They're immediately brought to the quarantine zone, and without Si and Mu around it looks like they're not going to kill them either. The kids are less than cooperative though. After being abandoned on the rooftop and left to die, they all remain tight-lipped about what's happened, beyond admitting that Byung Chan started this by kidnapping Hai and Ju. They just want to be let go. What happens during the time jump? We the skip forward four months later. The party leaders have decided not to hold a hearing on the Hyacinth bombing and end martial law. It's been a long time coming for the survivors, but they're still in quarantine, so it's not quite the happy ending they were all expecting. Anjo immediately heads over the wall in the middle of the night to pay her respects to Cheong San and the others. Leaving snacks by a tree, she tries to move on. However, in the distance happens to be a faint flickering light. A campfire from the looks of it. Who started the fire? Where is Nam Ra? Back in the quarantine camp, Anjo catches up with Su Hayak. She relays news about the campfire and believes it could well be Nara. She's going to go that very night, and Su Hayak immediately decides to join her. And of course, all the other kids gear up to go too. Eventually the gang make it down to the remnants of the school. On the roof, they find a fire burning. Gathering around it, Namra shows up. She admits she's missed them all, but she's not going to join them. How does all of us are dead end? 
Nam Ra breaks the news that there are others like her, and she's joining up with them. Could these others be those who Gwai Nam infected? Anjo tries to keep her around, but after smiling weakly, Nam Ra promises to stay friends and jumps off the roof. She senses others nearby and leaves them all to gawp and shock. The episode review. So all of us are dad bows out with a pretty conclusive final chapter, although there are teasing glimpses of where this could go for a second season. However, based on this showing this is going to be very much a love haste afar for many people, and I can't see this being renewed any time soon. There are parts of this show that have been really nicely written, and the action has certainly been well shot and exciting for the first half anyway. The contrived writing laid on has given some characters unbelievable amounts of plot armor, like Soju running from the guards and Xiong San evading being killed for ages after being hit with the blunt end of a knife. This one has been a bit of a mixed bag, but at least the ending does close things off as best they possibly could. It's always tricky to close out a zombie show without feeling like there are loose ends, and I guess bombing the city is a good enough way of killing off most of the zombies there. It's not perfect, but it has been an enjoyable ride, despite its flaws, and boy have there been flaws. For now, All of Us Are Dead ends with a closing chapter that's likely to be as decisively received as the series as a whole, 